everybody, it's Cinnamon Coney, your art sherpa, and today I'm showing you how you can paint in acrylic this fabulous set of four dolphins leaping out of a wave. On the mic is my husband, John. He's going to be hey. tracking me with many of our robotic cameras, reading the chat, and basically negotiating and surfing. No pun intended, the live streams their YouTube. So I'm going to show you every step of the process. I'm going to give you lots of tips and strategies to succeed. The materials list is in the description below, but there's also a link to our website where you can get the traceable. So if you're not really drawing yet, you have a way to transfer this image on and go ahead and paint it, even if drawing skills are not yet in your art box. But yeah. I believe in you and I know they will be soon. <laughs> or whenever. It's okay. It's just art. <laughs> How you doing today, babe? Pretty good. Pretty I'm going to sip my coffee. Oh, yeah. Coffee. All right. I got materials. Hmm. Let's, let's change it up and talk about the paint first. Okay. All right. So over here, I have ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, phthalo green, Mars black, Indian yellow, titanium white. As a special treat to myself, I have the, the black paint here in a fluid and white. And I also have... A little of the zinc white if I need it over here to the side. We'll have to see how that goes. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. The weird material I might be using today, I will be using a little bit of a fan brush and a little bit of the Sherpa Nugget. No, it's just a little sea sponge that looks like a nugget. Nugget, nugget, nugget. But it's going to help us with the top of our waves because I know that's sometimes challenging. Mm. And I want to show you how this can make that a lot easier. I have a canvas panel here. I get these in packs um, at my local Michaels, and it's nice because, you know, I can use the coupon and <laughs> have a bunch of canvases. They store really well. If you over-wet them or get them sopping wet, they can uh, bow a little bit, so be aware of that. You wouldn't want to go soak this under a sink. Would not work out well. On our show, we like to do wishes or intentions that we paint into the canvas, putting good energy and good vibes into the world. Um, so today we have healing for Lois's friend who, after having a car accident, is now dealing with um, uh, Lori's friend, uh, a head injury. Strength for um, a tremendous loss that Margaret has just gone through. Healing and care uh, for, for uh, Byrne and Ross who are going through cancer. So we're just wanting them to heal and be okay. Um, a car, John's. John will get this wish. A car and transportation for Jan. Just come into your life. Don't know how it's going to happen. Hope that yeah. happens for you, though. Angela B. Healing uh, for a little brush who got bitten, and that's never, ever fun. And healing, and there's this a beautiful wish saying that they would like healing and understanding for bipolar disorder. And I absolutely mirror that. Um, that is definitely something we could have a little more compassion for the illnesses that are not as easy to see as, say, you know, a wound, which is obvious because it's on the surface. Sometimes the wounds we carry on the inside, they're still a little too hidden and they don't get enough love. So lots of love to, to, the, to the person, not the one. We don't want to, we don't be like, yay. <laughs> well, we just got to hate. But yay for you. <laughs> yeah. We love our injuries and so, until they get better. That's right. We're saying love to the injuries. We're not like, yay, you're injured. We're saying Kiss love until the, the injuries feel better. Yeah. Kiss the ones. Kiss the boo-boos, the ones we see and the ones we can't see. I'm going to yeah. drink my coffee. 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 Okay. So. All right. So I am going to take a diamond-headed trowel. Ooh. And I'm going to make a little sky color. Now, my sky color, I'm probably going to do predominantly ultramarine blue, but I'm going to add a little phthalo to it just to kind of give it a little zazz so that it'll be a little bit more muted than our ocean we're going to work with. But, you know, hey. It's going to look good. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. All right. So that's a nice color mix that we have. I'm going to take a paint rag and wipe off my knife to clean it. You can use baby wipes, though. And today I'm going to be sporting the long-handled, no, this is the short-handled, number 30 bright. You just want a nice big brush that's going to let you paint easily. You're going to see me dip this in and drag off the extra. And I'm going to do loading, which is I'm going to take my paint and work it through both sides of the brush. So it's in the bristles, and I'm going to grab a bunch of my white. Now, that loading is really critical to get this right. It really is, and here's why. Because what we're trying to do is get paint into the belly of the brush so that when we go and paint our canvas, and we're going to paint our whole canvas this now, color. Can you show them what you mean by the belly? Yes, I can. Just point to it so you know what they say. I'm going to do that. I'm going to give them an anatomy lesson. 
toe, belly, heel, feral, crimp, handle. Okay. Those are the anatomy parts of your brush. Now you know stuff that uh, a bunch of art students I know don't know. <laughs> so, but they do now. But that, but loading it both ways really helps it smoothly lay down. Hey, you painted my canvas black again for me. Well, I see that. I'm going to load back up. See, I'm getting the load. Getting my paint loaded in. We're doing an acrylic ground here. Basically, what we're doing is we're painting the whole canvas a solid color. So that the loose painting we're about to do has this beautiful blue background to hang on. And that's going to be really nice for us. If you need more water, you just get the water, you dip in, drag off the extra. Let's load in some white into the belly, 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 belly. Get a little bit of our blue belly, belly. And just keep going. And that my explanation was that John had painted my background canvas black for me again so it looked neat. Or did Honey do it? Who did that? Yeah, it was, it was, I think it was me this time. Honey okay. does it sometimes. We have the ever-thickening background layer of gesso. Yeah, uh, this is the unofficial 200 layers on YouTube. <laughs> if you're ever wondering what a couple hundred layers of paint look like, it's this. It's, yeah, I don't know. It might be able to stop, you know, arrows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it really might. <laughs> If we'd been smart people, we would have filmed all the coats of paint and then made a video and had millions and millions and millions of views. You know, a recurve bow may make short work of it, but just a regular old bow? No, it might stop one. <laughs> <sighs> Time to put down the stress of the week, right, guys? Oh, yeah. Time to just let that go. It's Some weeks are intensely weird little weeks. I think this is an intensely weird little week. Just my opinion. I like that it's blue on blue on blue, and I'm blue on blue today. Everything matches today. Sip the coffee. I have to dry my canvas. Okay. And then I'm going to do the next little layer. Mm. The next little layer. The next little layer. John's going to talk to you while I'm away with my hair dryer. I'm going to... Hello. How you guys doing? So what uh, we generally talk about while she's gone is... Like, first of all, how much I love seeing all you guys, because I always do. There's a whole lot of you out here. How you doing? And there's, there's a lot more of you guys. So, hello. I will legitimately say, welcome. Um, and if this is your first time here, hi. And I talk a lot and sometimes get nervous when doing that. So, stay tuned. Um, uh, the hairdryer thing. Um, don't use heat. You keep it on low temperature so that uh, it... Uh, uh, any of the drying of your paint is the best thing possible. Yeah. So the next thing <laughs> is. <laughs> da, 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 da. All right. I might. So we're going to make a horizon line and actually it's going to come down to about here. I'll pay my little sky down and then come crisp with my um, water. And I might have John grab me some of my washi tape out of the jar, which is. Washi! Are they over there? Is the wa is the washi in it? I think the washi might be in a tub in the in the. In I organized recently, and there's nothing. That'll work. Just give me a tub of tape. Tub of tape. I'll just take whatever tape you got. Oh, you have the uh, wrong tape. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Uh, okay, I'll take this. This is artist tape. I have been using, however, lately low tack tape, which uh, washi tape as a, as an alternative. I'm gonna pull this out. You could also just draw a very straight line. I think it's in the drawers, the gray drawers, in the jar, in the gray drawers. It's okay. So you just want to place that about where you feel like your horizon line would be on this particular painting. And it's actually quite high. So I just want to make sure it's high, but I have enough sky to play with. And you want to also make sure it's level. I'm going to eye level it. You can use a T-square if you want to, like, make sure it's level, 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 level. Burnish it down lightly with my fingers. Ooh. And I'm going to give this a second coat. So I'll take another bright. I'm going to do a short handle. I'm going to dip in, drag off the extra. I'm going to load a little of my blue into the brush. Boom, 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 boom. Get some of my white. Boom, 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 boom. Now you're going to find when you're painting that the second coat of acrylic paint goes on much easier, if you've ever noticed that. See how that goes on much, much easier? And I'm going to show you how to do these clouds with a bright 
But if you want a whole bunch of stuff on clouds, uh, on our Facebook, we did a Technique Tuesday where I showed you guys four ways to make clouds just like these. And it was like with a sponge and a palette knife in different ways. So never feel like you've got one way. But I've been getting asked a lot about how to do it with a bright because I keep saying you can do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my bright all loaded up, all loaded up right here in the corner. You can see the load. It's just the white paint. Everything is still wet on my canvas. And I'm going to kind of make this little wiggle and I'll come down. And I'll go up and I'm making my cloud shape. See how my little cloud shape is very wiggly? It's a, this one little cloud kind of comes up. And then I'm going to just come right here and I'm going to brush very lightly. Look at that. And a lot of this is about this being wet so that the paint is blending in. I'm going to get just this nice little cloud right here. Look at that little cloud that's just happening. That's a nice little cloud. I can come and get the little corner again. And I might come right here and uh, I'll talk about a little friend that he has going on. And a low hanging little fellow, little shelf. And how nice that is. So I don't have a round brush. It's not a specialty brush. I love my specialty brushes. I know you guys do too. But the point is, is that sometimes the magic is in us. Do you think we should add a couple more clouds? Maybe like one over here? Okay. I'm going to just bring this down. And I'm just taking this very lightly down. And I'm wandering my brush trying to make these very different shapes. Now right here, I'm going to just softly wiggle this back up. And what I'm making is kind of like a hazy little washed up cloud bank. See how we're doing? The pressure on my brush is it's just kissing the canvas. It's not quite a hazy shade of winter. Not quite a hazy shade of winter. Look at that. Just clouds. Not that bad. Let's just say that all together. Clouds. Not that bad. <laughs> Not that bad. Not that bad. And I'm just going over this. This is all dry brush and I come across there and it's like some distant little clouds found a little space on my canvas. <gasps> Vicky would like to know what washi tape is. Oh, it's this really pretty floral or decorative tape that doesn't have a high tack to it. And it's really gorgeous. I couldn't get any painter's tape one day. It's pretty pricey. So I switched to washi tape. And I was like, oh my gosh, this works pretty well. So I'm adding another little bank of clouds here. Adding just another little bank, another layer, right? Because that's what clouds have is layers. I haven't added any water in my brush. I'm loading it mostly up at the corner. I'm just creating this like dimensionality, right? Because that's what we need in life is dimensionality. And some distant little wisps. That's a pretty nice little sky. Wisps. Considering I have whole cloud videos that took an hour, I'm kind of wondering if I should have just done that sky. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now you're just peeling that tape off. Just, yeah, just peel that tape off. And you're going to notice it gives me a little bit of this really lovely horizon line. Oh, yeah. Now, to help myself know the space of everything, I'm going to do this little loose sketch. I'm going to come. So if this is my horizon line about... Right here, I'm going to make a little mark with my paint. You can do chalk. And I'm going to come right over here. And it's almost at the same height. And I'm going to make a little arc and down. See, it's very light. I'm just trying to let myself know where my wave is going to be. Right? I'm not trying to change the whole orientation of my painting. But once I know that, I can sit there and say, all right, about that much of my painting has to be this darker color. So where I have my blue and phthalo together, I'm going to mix those into the belly of my brush and get just a smidge white, just a smidge, and maybe just a smidge of my phthalo blue. And I'm going to come back here with this very bright blue color along this line and neatly and very lovely paint the background of my ocean. If you have a lot of trouble getting a level line, I know I do. You can always come back once everything is dry and tape the top part.
Another thing I can do if I feel like some of it isn't level is I can come back with a brush and lift it up. I'm going to just make sure that this base color is across everything. The reason that I do this is that the sky, I'm going to show you a really cool ocean trick. Notice that I'm just getting this color on my canvas. I'm not being real precious about it. I'm just getting it on here. But once it's on, I come back and I smooth it out into very flat strokes. This is important when painting water. And I feel like there's a little bump in my horizon. So I'm going to take a nice little angle brush before this is all dry. And I'm going to just make sure. And if I've got to get my little cloud color, what I do is I can come back here and also come back with like the cloud cover. Okay, and just make sure that it's as level as I can make it. So we all have little moments, but you can fix any of those little moments. Now I have just enough of my little sky left, so I can get, I think I can get a little white in the sky. So here's my sky color into my brush, and I'll get a little white into it until I get back to the actual sky color that I had. Okay. You can go ahead and just lightly brush some of this. Yeah, and I'm using a big brush, aren't I? Big brushes are awesome. Just lightly. And it could get kind of hazy back here. Hazy shade winter. There, make it hazy. I seeded your brain with a song. I didn't mean to do that. That's okay. It was a good song. It was a good song. So now I have the reflection of my sky into my water, which I want. And I'm going to take my diamond headed brush and I'm going to make some. Oh, this is my washing tape. Wonder where that came from. <laughs> this is a really thick decorative one. Let's see, it's just real pretty, but it, it has low tack and it's been working really well for me. So that's a weird thing I've been doing lately. I'm going to take a little of my phthalo green and a little of my phthalo blue. I'm going to mix them together. And I'm going to add one bead of my ultramarine into that. Because we're tying certain values together. Once I have that, I have a very nice turquoise that I can start from. And I can put out a little more of my titanium white. And if we do really good at all this stuff, we get to paint dolphins. All right, so I'm going to load this up with this color back and forth. I'm going to get some of my white. I'm going to go ahead and just brush some of that aquiness into my ocean. See how we're doing? Not too much. Look, all level. Look how level it is. Gonna be the prettiest, prettiest water when we're all done. All right, little bit of that back there, letting that dry for a minute, loading this up, loading up, loading up. Now I'm gonna have some fun here. So here's gonna be the trick. I'm gonna show you with one stroke, and then you're gonna see for the rest. I'm gonna be making strokes that curve like this. See how they're curving? My wave is going to be darkest down here and get lighter at the top. I have in the iCard a video that you can watch about waves on how to just do them better and some things that might be messing you up if you need a wave refresher. So about here I can go with this dark color and that's going to kind of lighten. It comes up to right here and it's probably because because all the colors, the phthalo blue, the phthalo green, and the ultramarine are a little transparent. We're going to do two coats to get the appropriate depth of color. Okay. So I can go like this, and I'm going to get a little of my white. I might even grab a smidge of my Indian yellow over here. A dip in my water. 
And I'm just brushing back and forth so you can see it's kind of lighter right there. Make it a lot more white at the top of my way, right? So I'm going to bring this line along here. And then I'm going to just brush this down a bit. See what I'm doing? Brushing that down into what's below it. Load up if you need some more color. And just we're going to softly blend these together. We're just starting our shape and everything right now. So it's just about catching the values in this underpainting while we're letting this up here have a little bit of a dry. How are we doing on that? Oh, that's looking really good. Now, one of the things I'm going to do is I've got a, hmm, I'll do this. This is a number eight Cambridge. I'm going to take a little of this aqua blue that I have. I'm going to get right into my ultramarine. I'm going to just come out here and make some darker values in these dashing strokes. Can you see my little dashing strokes? Yeah. So what this is talking about, right? So this is a Cambridge number eight. It's a bright. What this is talking about is the dark values out in the water. So what you're actually seeing is a mirrored surface that's rippling. One part of the ripple is reflecting the sky and the other part is in shadow. So think of a fluid mirror, that's what we're actually painting. Now if you need to get a little water on the brush, you dip in, load up, And we're going to just put these nicely. I'm not going to put them too much in the center. They'll be more focused to the outside because the sun is overhead and it is lighting the center of our ocean just a little bit more in our field of view, in our perspective. Just dashing out some of these little waves. Take that right there even. Very dark value. Maybe that's a deeper thing. And let's hit this over here. My pressure is very light. I'm just brushing back and forth. You can see it in a back and forth stroke on the toe of the brush. Oh, the brush, back and forth stroke. Uh, simple, fun times. Looking good. Now I'm going to get a bunch of this on this brush. If you need to get a little bit of your water on there, I'm going to really load. And I'm going to work the deepest value of my wave. Oh. Coming up. Working the deepest value of my wave, working the blues into the blues. The blues into the blues. You've got this. And this is going to help you feel better. Loading it up. Now, the wave is going to be cresting here, and there's going to be some shadow right here. And I'm going to even dry brush this sort of a bit through here where I know I'm going to be painting the crest of the wave. Now I'm kind of tapering this right this way. And I'm going to show you this really cool sea foam trick to like have better sea foam experience. I don't know how you guys feel about painting the little sea foamies. It's actually pretty fun. And now that you've done clouds, sea foam will not stand a chance. Right? Yeah. Get my brush in the water. Load up. A little more thalo, you can get it. You can even be like right here and be like, there can be a dark little area maybe right here. 
And then some cool little reflections coming down. See, I'm wiggling these little reflections. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play with those a little bit. I'm <laughs> What's wrong? Joe was just in here. I'm with her. Uh, the dolphins here are probably saying so long and thanks for all the fish. <laughs> I think that this might be very much that. <laughs> now I'm gonna I'm gonna change the slope of the wave. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my brush. I'm gonna load a little bit of my white into it. My brush, a little bit of my white, and then coming through here. I'm going to softly brush this. The stroke is going to kind of curve upward and to the right. Kind of an upward and to the right little curve. Okay. So what now I'm talking about is some water that's maybe a little bit flatter. And it's feeding the wave. It's reflecting a little of the sky. There we go. Right. It's reflecting a little of the sky, and this will help get our angle or the steepness of the curve of the curl. A little more white. <laughs> need some water. Get some water. There was a very sherbet thing that just happened. What was the sherbet thing that just happened? So. Uh, a, a young lady came in and said, what's that artist's name who sang Girls Just Want to Have Fun? I just saw her on a commercial the other day and has been straining my brain to remember who they are. And like it was a, a chorus, they the Sherpets all responded in cue. There was just a, a chime of Cindy Lauper all just unanimously shouted out from... Oh, yeah, this is definitely a Cindy Lauper safe zone. Yeah, this is like, you you found your people. <laughs> <laughs> your people is here. And they're painting. <laughs> and, yeah. So now you can start to see the shape of that wave carve out and take space, you know? And that's important. I'm going to do a thing here. I've got to, I'm actually going to take advantage of your box. Because your box is going to hold up my reference above that little lip. This is really going to help me. Painting the wave is like one of my favorite things. I just really, 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 really love painting a wave. All right, next mix I'm going to do, I'm going to do phthalo blue and phthalo green, but I'm not going to work in my ultramarine. <laughs> What's funny? Craig. Hi, Craig. <laughs> Girls just want to paint waves. Oh, it's so true. <laughs> oh, the puns are... I think so dudes want to paint waves, too. I, you know, it was just, uh, that was a good one. That was. We don't know how this wave identifies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we don't. We don't. We don't. We support it. There is support for this wave. All right. And all friends of wave. Maybe it's an Australian wave. We don't know. It's true. It could curl the opposite direction. Could be a South African wave. It's true. Could be a Southern California wave. The greater waves from Maine. Definitely not from Tiapu, though. It's like too small and not going to kill you. Yeah, that's just like a... <laughs> <laughs> this is their flat day when they're like, yeah, there's nothing happening. <laughs> I right. put out a little more of my titanium white. And it's clearly not a Gulf of Mexico wave. <laughs> no, that, that would blue. be no wave. <laughs> no, they have them. They're just brown. And, like and there, there are no waves. I'm going to add a little of my Indian yellow into my brush. I'm going to work it through. You can see how I did. Not that much. And I'm going to come over into my phthalo turquoise that I made. It's going to make this very bright green. And I'm going to get a lot of white. I'm right here. At this, this, this beginning of this part right here, I'm going to bring this. I'm going to shade that like sort of reflection space through there where we're talking about the wave had some little kind of reflections going on. We're just talking about the top of the wave. My pressure is super light. 
Super light pressure. Guys, see how light my pressure is? And if you need a little more turquoise into the mix, then you bring it over here till you get it perfect. Get your white into it. You got to play, play, play. Then you play, play, play. Right here. There's an interesting bit of kit happening right here. I'm going to start talking about where this is starting to curl. Right? And it's coming up over the top. I might even grab a little of my phthalo. I'm going to bring this up over the top. This is the top of the curl starting to happen. See how I'm doing that? Of the curl. Get a little more white on there. Boom, boom, boom. A little water in my brush. Too much. We've got a lot of uh, foam we're going to be doing here. Mm. So we're going to enjoy that foam in a minute. I'll wipe this out and get a lot more of my white. I I don't want it to be a white white up here because I'll be coming back to make some sea foam. Sea foam green. And we can even get right into my phthalo, I mean my turquoise, my phthalo blue. Kind of even change some of that up. We'll want more white because it's quite bright. You just don't want it to be white, white, white. Hmm. Because you need the white, white, white to be the water, right? White water, literally what it's called. The legend of the surfers call this white water. They actually really do, though. <laughs> so Tells you a lot about it. I'm going to come right here, and I'm going to add an even brighter kind of little spot, just a little bit right there brushed in just talking about some highlights and that still not white white now in in our rating of one to three difficulty what would we say this one is? i give this one a three one because i feel like people kind of panic when it comes to water but i actually think you're going to be surprised at how well you do see this little wiggle i did here wiggle down Coming downward on the tip of the brush, then coming back. Now I'm talking about the shape of that. So two th I'm talking about the shapes of things in the water, the shape they take, and I'm also talking about the direction of the water with the stroke. So those are the two things that you're trying to track in your mind. Now we can see that there is a bit of a lip here that we're going to talk about coming down. So we can paint that right there the shape of that we can handle that could even be a little wider at the tip i don't want to get into too much of the broken up water because i'll do that with the sponge in a minute so i'm just doing the big swaths of areas that would have a solid space before i started to break it up right yeah now, once I have that, I'm going to be able to really, really work shape. Let's rinse out. Let's sip our coffee and contemplate our place in the universe for a second. How are you doing, beautifuls? Are you doing good today? They are really doing good, I think. <sighs> you know, we've got... Just to, as the Sherpa turns, I'll let you know, we've got over 615 people, 620 people hanging out here, checking out these dolphins, jumping through while you're painting with your fabulous blue wave hair. Did you, did you, they're like, this is all very matchy-matchy today. I know, I'm having a matchy-matchy day. I got to repurple my tips. <laughs> yeah, matchy -matchy. My hair, but I was like, you know, it's a good, I might as well just go with this because I am so congruent. Your little flock of seagulls. So, radio is this your the radio is, stuff. is this what? your natural hair color? Yes, I thought so. Totally natural, or in this way. Yep. Now, is this a 
It's just that they were, they were also noticing you're wearing some very TARDISy things here today. I don't know why I we're mean, just taking a little break here. Why you just I know. I, I need to. Sometimes you need to take a little minute break. Take a, take a deep breath. A little breather. Let it out. <sighs> Whatever you're worrying about right now, just put it down. Yeah. For the next 45 minutes, just put it down. It'll be there when you get back. I'm doing that right now, mentally. Taking the thing that's on my brain that's panicking me, and believe me, there's about five things. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to put it down right here. Okay. Where is the painting? I'm going to do that, too. I'll be back in about five minutes, okay? Wait, where are you going? Five minutes? <laughs> okay. Fell down for five. Okay. He's so cheeky. All right. Let's continue on our way before we lose stunt hands. Who's <laughs> decided that we've, like, somehow declared roll call? <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were just going to take a fiver. I mean... I get. I should get some. Coffee. I'm gonna load up some of my Thalo blue and a little extra of my Thalo turquoise. I'm gonna get a smidge, and guys, I mean a smidge of my black. So little that it's barely, barely going to be coloring it. And I'm gonna come under my wave here, still using that Cambridge. I wiped out because I felt like the brush was a little wet. And I didn't want it to be that wet. And I'm gonna pull this down. I'm making this sort of little shadow space under here. I'll hit come here. Shadow, shadow, shadow. Oops, come under here and give this some shadow too, some depth. You got all serious. I did. You went from, you went from choke, 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 choke to serious. Serious, serious artist. Well, you know what? That... That shadow just got serious. <laughs> that shadow just got serious. <laughs> it did. It just went, do not surf in here. <laughs> For dolphins only. <laughs> Hetty little humans may well, not ride this wave. If that were a, uh, uh, what was it? T -t 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 What's the big wave out there with the team? Tiapu. Tiapu. If it was a Tiapu wave, that would be like a million in Tahiti, waves. where Agent Coulson was. It would be like. Or I guess Agent is. Coulson. And they better resolve that. I'll tell you, I'm not going to spoil it. I'm just saying, geez. But that's a that's about a. I, I trust know, Josh Wheaton though, so. Wave, so it's not going to be quite so. Wheaton. Eater I mean. of surfers. It's probably going to be more like. Dolphins be playing here. <laughs> I'm going to add, kind of play with that shadow a bit up through here and its little reflections that it could have. And we'll go ahead and you know we're just. Talking about that a little bit. I'm brushing that. And now don't we kind of really see the shape of our wave afoot? The shape of our wave is really happening here, isn't it? This is us having a wave. And I'm very lightly, look what I'm doing. I'm just lightly brushing. Isn't that lovely? You can come here and very lightly brush. Look at how little pigment's there. This is like dusting or blushing or rouging. Any any color that I have one place, I can probably, I'm going to come over here and add just a, a little bit of this dark value. It's just almost a dry brush. It's rather lovely. Rather lovely. Now. I'm going to wash this and put this to the side. And I'm going to get its much smaller friend. I would get a number two. You could do a number two bright in any of the things you could do. You could probably get away with the cat's tongue. But what you want is a small brush that you can uh, have just a little bit of color in. So I'm going to get a little of my turquoise in here, but not too much. And I'm going to come and get white. And that way I'm not really getting white white. I'm getting like off white. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's going to be lighter than the wave I'm about to paint on, but it's still, you know, not. I'm going to start here, and I'm going to just wiggle it. You're going to see me wiggle it. I'm going to add some sea foam. A little bit here and a little bit made? to the right. See, Up I heard a rumor that sea foam was made by unicorns running in the waves. It is. And uh, mermaids that. Spishy, spashy. Hate the wrong guy, apparently. Your hands, Christian Zanderson. Thank goodness for Disney. 
fix that. Disney fixed it. So I'm just, it's white, right. but it, I don't want it to be the brightest white that I have, right? No. Because you're going to do more highlights. So you mean just bring it here. Maybe there'd be a little patch here. It's a more solid patch. It's a very dry brush, and I am rubbing it softly. It's going to sound a little perverse, but that's what we're doing. Just rub your canvas softly, gently. All right. When we're bringing NEC foam in, imagine that you have circles that are being stretched and pulled into the water, right? So you're not trying to make little forward-facing circles. Everything's got to be sort of in perspective. I like to use my brush strokes to help guide how I shape that. So if I come right here and I bring a little bit down, you can see that this is just helping me do this right now. And I'm, I see an area that I will be benefited if I just make a little bit of a reflection. So I've made a slightly darker color than my sea foam, slightly darker. And I'm going to just brush. A little bit of a reflection here. All right. But it may end up reading as foam. Regardless, we do want this lightness. If you need to get a little more of your color into it, go ahead. What you're really talking about is a light area in the wave. Oh, there it is. That's the color I'm looking for. And that way I can still, it's just sort of like the sky and stuff reflecting as it pulls up. Right? Yep. And we want that. Once we have that, then we can come back with our sea foam. I don't think we have it in too many other places, but that'll help us. I'll rinse out and get back to my sea foaming. Your sea foaming. Foaming. They see me foaming. They and be surfing. <laughs> they see me foaming. I be waving. Oh, I like that. They see me foaming. I be waving. <laughs> <laughs> so good to be good at art. It's a fun feeling to paint, isn't it? I have an idea. I'm going to bring a little bit of this down. And I wondered, isn't that fun? And this little friend can come down here and it might, maybe it wanders down in a thin little line and comes on up. And then there's some there's little bubbles here. You can put your bubbles where you want to. You can put your bubbles where you want to. Nobody has a right to tell you how to, how to put your sea foam in. Or where to put your bubbles. No one has a right to tell you where to put your bubbles. Except bubbles in my your, studio. I bubbles can, are your business, man. But no, in here, I definitely have bubble approved zones because we have camera lenses and that's all. Well, that might this be. This is just camera bias, not bubble bias. And you can see just as soon as we start to do this little sea foamy stuff, right? <laughs> and see, now even where we put the shadow, we can put some sea foam over that. And like here, it might be just a little bit, this is a dry brush. It would seem I've, I've, I've had some bubble trauma. You've been traumatized by something. So I've got some feels about my bubbles. You've got feels about everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just grab. it looks like I probably won't even need my zincs at all. Yeah. You really, this is looking really cool. Probably won't need my zincs at all. Just because this is going so well, and I'm not really needing a transparent white to get this feeling across. So I'm just going wiggle, 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 and I wander up and come back. See how that creates these little openings, these little spots. What is it we call? That hue over there. Pay attention to that hue over there. And right now we got to pay attention to this hue over here. This off-white, foamy little hue. Now, an interesting thing, when I come in here, I'm going to do something kind of crazy. I'm going to come just, oh, my gosh, just barely get it. I got just a smidge, just, oh, my goodness, just a little bit of the, of the black into it. And that's because under my wave, my sea foam ought to be in shadow a bit, huh? Just slightly. Just a little. Less bright than its friends. Every once in a while, you may need to rinse out your brush or reload. You know, don't be afraid to do that. I'm going to put a nice heavier patch of it right here. And 
Just these are just my shadow foams. My shadow foam. My shadow foam. Now, what size brush are you using there? I'm still just using my number two. Little number two. Little number two brush. And if you don't have a number two, but you had a number three, could you use that? Yes, you could use any small detail brush that will let you make these little faux marks. You're just making marks. Honestly, I could do this whole wave with my fingers. I could finger paint this wave. But I would need a bigger canvas, but I could finger paint this wave. Or just be like with my pinky. But it would be... It's it's for the effect you're going for. It's a little easier with that. And if you don't believe me, go look up Iris she, Scott. She, well, yeah. It's be like, boring. oh, yeah, you can finger paint a wave. Oh, my gosh. Now I'm going to get back into my turquoise. I'm going to work that through. I'm going to get back into my whites. This is my, this is still not my white white yet, but it is my brighter white. And say my shadow white under the wave. All through here, my foam is a bit, you know, more substantial. It's uh, got a lot more going on. And you can see I'm using the brush strokes to guide the openings in my foam. Are you guys catching how I'm doing that? Show me that again. What did you say? Okay, so the brush stroke is going like this. Okay, yeah. All right, so if I'm going to make an opening, I'm going like that. I'm going to have an opening, and I use that brush stroke to help me. Oh, I see. That way I'm not trying to do the foreshortened perspective of my sea foam. You know, I'm just following my brush stroke. Foreshortened perspective of sea foam. My college professor surely would have mocked me for saying such things. No, uh, Callie yeah, would actually, have been like, good job, John. He would have been like, yeah, that's actually pretty good. So I was thinking about my physics professor. Actually, he would have been like, oh, yeah. Well, he was pretty supportive of the arts, though. Actually, I was like, yeah, actually, most of my college professors were like, no, those are all pretty good things to be thinking about, now that I think about it. And girls, he, I love that John's physics professor thoroughly encouraged <laughs> thinking about girls and dates. Okay, Professor Judd was a uniquely awesome physics professor. Um, he was sort of the combination of uh, physics and Sean Connery. Like if you if you mixed Neil deGrasse Tyson with Sean Connery, you would get Dennis Judd. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you have to give him ice blue eyes. Yes, true. So, and 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 uh, uh, like the jet white beard that was pretty cool, man. It was pretty cool. It was just he was just cooler than regular people. <laughs> <laughs> like so, he wore poet shirts. So that's how cool he was. <laughs> and like so totally cool. pulled it off. He did. He was he was awesome. I'm doing my foam a little heavier over on the side. You guys can see how it's just a little bit more substantial. Look at that foam. Now that wave has all that foam. Do you guys love it? I love the foam. I'm I'm talking smack about the foam, but the foams are turning out really good. Now I'm going to come back with a little bit of my bright white, and now you're going to see why I saved that as a color that I can pull out here on a couple of spots. Look at that. So that my foam isn't flat. doesn't want you to miss a single minute of, 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 of anyone getting a little white paint. You can put a, f a few bits and that won't hurt you here and there in your foamy, foamy, foamy life. Now over here we are back into the slightly uh, shadowed foam because it's going to be under this wave, right? So I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pop a slight shadow under this wave. So I'm going to get my just my uh, aqua and come under here. And I'm going to just very carefully dry brush even in here a little a little bit more shadow under the wave. I didn't have enough. There we go. Now we can see the, the shape of the wave. Get a little more of my white. And I haven't rinsed out my brush. A little bit of my foam kind of in its little shadow space. So it's foam, but it's a little bit darker than the rest of the foam. So it looks like it's also in shadow. There we go. How's that? Now you can always come back through 
I just rinse my brush. I'm getting just white and find a couple spots. And now, is that kind of a dry brushing? This is a dry brush. I always wipe off the extra when I'm using this, and I'm using a very light touch. I'm coming along and finding little highlights. I'm going to, maybe right here, I'm going to just work some of these little highlights. And if it gets too wet, it doesn't do a nice effect. I don't like it. Picking up some of the highlights that could be down here, right? Look at that, like all in the highlights. Just helps our wave take a little bit of shape. Now, the tops of waves can be very stressful. So we're gonna take our nugget. You spritzed your- I'm gonna get it, it was dry. You spritzed. want it to be slightly damp, but nothing you can squeeze out of it. And I'm just gonna dip it kind of into my white paint. I'm gonna let a little smidge of the aqua get into it. At first, cause we gotta have some values and I may need to put a little more titanium white out. And I'm gonna show you how to use this to get the better top of a crashing wave. The cause sometimes top. it just feels overwhelming to get the crashing wave, doesn't it? I wonder who is overwhelmed by crashing waves. I'm gonna come here, you can see my nugget, how it's loaded. Just at the top. You can bring a little bit over the front of the wave. Look at that. Who's freaking out right now? You are. I love you this. Are. And then where I'm gonna, I need it to be smaller, I'll just take it down and pop it up. You've got that. You know, if, if you're loving this, put a little thumbs up so I can see them. Yeah, if you think, Sponge foam is awesome. Thumbs it up, man. Yeah, For, I just it doesn't like, do anything in my algorithm, but I'm just saying, let us know. Good job. I can see. We, we, I can see them go up as they sit here. So we'll just see what happens. And put a little splash up there, didn't I? Yeah. Look at that little splash. It can be really hard to get the, these waves, right? Yeah. Bring it out here and... A little bit of a splash. That one came down further. It's a little friend. So it's an up and down tapping motion. If you drag, it's going to make a drag mark like that. So you definitely, definitely want to make sure that you're taking advantage. Of all your sponge has to offer. <laughs> Light pressure back here where I'm just doing this open splash, right? Just a little splash. I'll take that forward. A little more white on here. And with a little white highlight, look at that. I like this a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Just play, just enjoy. Light pressure. We have definitely found the thumbs up and the thumbs up emojis. And, <laughs> and, and they're like, we definitely like this. The are we done is, though in our awesomeness? Are... No, my goodness, guys. We are not done in our awesomeness. Our awesomeness, I'm going to rinse this out so it doesn't dry acrylic on me. It's going to make my hand messy, but I don't care. Is it messy? A little bit. It just now, rinses off. At this point, I'm going to show you the things to make this wave awesome. And if you want to add dolphins, you can add dolphins. But many of you might be like, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my number two brush again. I'm going to load up some paint. And I'm going to come along the top of this wave. And I'm going to just very carefully brush out a little bit more of the white. See that? Tap that out a couple places. I might even. Add a little bit of a thought edge right there. Now, uh, just talking about it pulling down in the water, and then we're going to come up at the top and we're going to kind of make these little.
brake marks. They're going to be a big deal over here. As soon as I'm done with the brake marks, we're going to do it. Desi was asking here. She usually uses beginner level paints, but was considering upgrading the whites in this area. Yes. Okay. This is a good place to do that, huh? Uh, yeah. E even if you're doing beginner level paints, craft paints, upgrade your whites. So see how we're like breaking up the top of that wave? You're going to break the wave. Yeah, we are. What if the wave breaks itself? It'll break itself. But we're just talking about that little space right there. And then you can even like show some of these more thought out watermarks that are happening down here. Or maybe the water has more of an edge that you might see, can't you? On that part of the wave. Look at that. And as if that's not enough yummy fun, and it is a lot of yummy fun, if you want to take it to the next level, you get your fluid paint, you put it out, you grab my handy dandy perfect every time splatter brush or whatever brush you use to splatter. You're probably good where you are. So this is for those of you that are taking it to that next level. And add some splatter to the top of your wave. And maybe even sometimes to the bottom where it's crashing, right? I like it. Now doesn't it look like our wave is having a whole moment? Be as playful or as crazy as you want. Whatever it makes it feel like dolphins would be leaping through this. Those are some great. I'm going to zoom in on those a little bit. so Yeah, I can you have a nice them. little zoom. Show them what they can do. Well, I just I want, I want to be backed up so they can see how you do it. But now that you've got it in there, I want yeah, to Yeah, just take see. a little tour around. Tour the painting. Take them on a tour. Well, you can that see texture. how that texture is just so different. Pretty energetic little wave, isn't it? I feel good. You feel good. I got to dry this so I can put my little dolphin friends in. Okay. All right. So while she's drying that, I'll say thank you guys for coming and hanging out and staying with us. We love having you guys here. Don't forget, check out in the link in the description down below, which should lead you to, oh, it will, in just like two seconds, our website and <laughs> time travelers. So the on our website, you're going to find all sorts of cool things like, uh, and I'll put one up here, this little hoot meter where, uh, there it is, it's that little hoot meter. You can go out to our website and you can find that we're, we, Cinnamon rates these paintings on a, on a level of one to three hoots. And uh, you can go out there and find that hoop meter on all of the pages for all of the projects that we've got. I think we have over 600 projects, 700 projects out there. And all of them have a little hoot meter right there down at the bottom. And you can vote on yourself on what you think that difficulty is. And uh, that, that's what that's for. So that's a little cool thing we've got. It is a cool thing you've got. You've got a cool thing. I've got a cool thing. We've got a cool thing. Boom, boom. Painting with. Hmm. 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 I need my black velvet number, no, my uh, ruby set number two, but I guess I've got my angle for right now. Hmm. What do you but need? Do I you need the, um, uh, I need Frawley fresh water and a ruby set number two. Okay. I will mute me and. You can do it or honey can do it or somebody can do it. I feel like I saw honey go by. And then just a number two. So uh, for the next part, we're going to sketch in our little fellows, and we're going to be working um, on this the furthest back going forward as we're sketching it out so we get a nice layer. You can customize this and make this meaningful to your life. Like if you, you know, have um, a particular family size, like five members of your family, you could add an extra dolphin. 
you could have this represent you and your best friend, you and a family member. It, you know, if you're like, no, I'm a lone dolphin, right? I do this myself. I'm awesome. You could do a lone dolphin. You know, however you want to swim in the ocean, let that reflect. Actually, more accurately, I would say the way you wish you were swimming in the ocean, let the painting reflect that. Because the things that we look at, yes, definitely, just like the whole bucket, uh, reflect how we feel and who we are greatly. So it's important to be thinking about those things. Now, I have a traceable, and it has all the dolphins very carefully and meticulously sketched in, but I'm just going to freehand paint them and hope it works out really well. And to do that, I'm going to take a little bit of my uh, turquoise and my black, and I'm going to do this where hopefully you can see this go in. So at this point of the wave, I'm going to say that there's a little fellow and his back goes above the horizon line a bit, right? And he comes down, or she comes down at a nice little angle. I may need to get my uh, brush wet so the paint flows off of it nicely. I'm making that nice little arc. I'm doing this so you can kind of see how I put them in. But again, you've got the traceable. So if you're like, yeah, that ain't me, I don't mind. <laughs> It's not me. Is it not? No. <laughs> like, it's not me, it's not me. All right, I'm going to put the little bottle nose part of him in right here. And then right off here, and not too particularly long, right, we're going to do the little nose part here. And part of that. It comes back and goes down. We'll paint that all in, and hopefully we got a good shape there. And that my dolphins are not going to end up looking crazy no. by the end of this lesson. <laughs> but, I mean, it could happen. I don't worry about the tail because we have a dolphin directly in front of him blocking that. There's no point in painting that. It's going to be so painted out in about a second. You can use, if you want to sketch on your canvas, you can use the kind of chalk you use on a um, chalkboard. And that can work very nice. I'm going to go ahead and add a little fin. So if I were to come back off the head and then say there was a little fin coming back, that's actually pretty far back on the back, so I'm going to put that back here. And we have another little fin. Now, one fin is hidden in the body. Only one fin is coming out. So right now, if you notice, we're kind of dealing with the silhouette of the dolphin. All right, so I'm only painting his silhouette. Now, Jenny was asking, she just uses those little um, bottles of craft paint. Is yes. That, is she okay with using that for this? Yes. Okay. Craft paint is, we give no shade to craft painters here at all. If you're using craft paint, you use that. We're just asking you guys to use uh, the stuff that makes you happy and respects your budget and takes care of you. And as long as your craft paint's taking care of you, you're good. Now, you were saying if you have any trouble coverage, just what? That just... might be time to upgrade. If the paint you're painting with isn't covering for you or isn't mixing as you would like it to, you may want to change brands. But understand, even among craft paint, Deco makes a paint called Americana, and it, it's basically this, and it has all the same colors that I use, including zinc white. There's a paint called, I love this paint, Abstract by Sunlayer Acrylic. Mm -hmm. Comes in a pouch, comes in all the colors I use. So that's just if you're having trouble or you're doing an impasto technique or somehow that's, but if it's working for you, go with it. And you can always, like, couple coats. Yeah, you can always a couple coats. Don't be like, yeah, you're good. I'm going to add a little white to this so I can see the layer over his friends. So he comes back a little bit like this. I'm going to kind of sketch in that separation there. And maybe um, a little bit higher. So I'll put that in. So what you're seeing me do is try to use these guys' relationships to each other to orient their placement in the canvas as I freehand this in, which is essentially uh, pretty crazy. But I've been known to do crazy things on my show. Like this freehand of painting in front of everybody. <laughs> of dolphins, which I don't paint all the time or anything. It's not like horses. Don't be impressed if I free paint horses. But 
<laughs> should be able to do that. All right, I'm going to come here and I'm going to come back and get the little bottle nose in. And his little his little nose is right here. If I need to paint out any mistakes, it's really nice because the friend, I feel like it came forward like this and then is a little bit like that, a little bit, the, the nose is a little bit forward. And then the body comes back and there is a tail right here that we're going to be dealing with. And you definitely have a fin comes back. Not like a shark fin, like a dolphin fin, right? The other thing about sketching in and painting in this way that I'm doing right now is that um, the underpainting on them I was already done. <laughs> it's very helpful to me, the teacher. I may actually just miss this a little bit because I don't have to keep getting water. So when I get water, what I'm doing is I'm improving the flow of the paint. A lot of times I get asked, what are you using? Because people think I'm using a medium or an additive to the water. I am not on this. I'll always tell you if I'm using a medium. I'll always tell you what I'm using, the exact colors I'm using. That doesn't get hidden from you. And if it's wrong, it's a mistake. And then generally I update the video and correct it. So, like it's generally like I didn't see that that aqua teal got in there. <laughs> now down here I've got to put a little tail. So let's put that little tail out there. Gotta shake his little tail feather. <laughs> what? It's just the grand comedy of life. I'm a grand comedy? Or well, I'm just funny accidentally again. <laughs> I, I'm I enjoy often that I funny laugh. accidentally. I, I enjoy that I laugh a lot in my but life. They already look pretty good though, don't they? They really do. And the other thing I can do is I can use my fluid paint to make this easier as well. Trick! <laughs> because it already has a lot of moisture in it. So if I have to do a weird light color that's coming forward, I can do that. Now, this one is coming forward into the wave. Some of his body is blocking here. You'll see me looking my references to the side of me. That's what I'm looking at. Um, artists, unless you're incredibly versed in a subject, you should be looking at references when you paint. It is not a lack of emotion. That means you have to look at a reference. <laughs> lack of, not of emotion, of imagination. Um, artists should only paint what they're extremely versed in or prepared for without a reference. Can't paint what you can't see. And when you see artists working from their imagination, what they're really working from is about 100,000 hours of hard work and training. Hmm. So just like have mad respect for their determination and the hours that they log to become as skilled as they are. But they, they, they weren't like mystically touched by talent fairs. <laughs> it's more of a rocky story. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. It's like when people see me do horses and they're like, oh my gosh, that's like so amazing. How do you do that? Oh man, I like drew like a bazillion, gazillion, bazillion horses. Dolphins, I didn't draw a bazillion, gazillion of. I need a reference. I have a sense of their subtle shapes. Mm -hmm. I very much like his tail in this shot. I really do. It's like, it's like an airfoil. Now, <laughs> there's a, now, not that uh, dolphins are at all the same, but 
we have a few shark paintings out on our website one might enjoy if you're enjoying these dolphins. Oh, yeah. Like a week of them for Shark Week. For Shark Week. <laughs> you know, Shark Week. I think I R-carded Sharky Night into this painting, which is like my... So I had some paintings I really loved. I really loved my Sharknado painting. I might upload it to the Facebook page. But I really loved that painting. Other people were like, Sharknado? I guess they don't watch a lot of sci-fi channel B movies. But, I mean, like, we're on Sharknado. It's about time, right? So, it's finally over. <laughs> what will Tara Reid do now? I don't know. I'm really worried for her. What is Tara Reid going to do if there's no more Sharknado or Aaron Zoe? Oh. I mean, like, what are they going to work on? I don't know. Are they producers? Are they okay? Are they going to be able to eat? I can't lose another one like I lost the Hames. Mm. It can't happen to me. I can't deal with it. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do their last little friend. I got my airfoil on there. The only thing I'm going to do on my airfoil is just remind myself it's an airfoil by adding a little highlight right here. So he's, it reminds me, oh, yeah, that's an airfoil. These guys are actually going to paint in fairly well, I think. Can you believe I freehanded these little suckers in? I can knock on one on that one. I'm not done. Fails miserably on YouTube. Yeah. Hopefully not. Okay, so this one is very tucked from the back end. Here, it kind of comes up like this. Maybe get a little white on there so you can see that. But then, really bends down at quite a steep curve, quite a steep bend. But still has the nice little bodily nose. Bottle, 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 no stuffing. Sorry. Filling it in, getting that color kind of thought out. A little more white on there. This nose is a little, little less visible, just like a little more kind of just trying to capture the shape and arc of this little fellow. There we go. Look, we got him pretty good. How are we doing? He looks good. Hopefully. Love their little shape. They're so designed to go fast. They are. And you know, I bet it's fun to swim in bee dolphin. I bet that's like so fun. I bet they're like, it's so good to be dolphin and I feel bad for other animals in the sea. <laughs> I bet they do. I guess there's a, uh, <clears throat> they're, they're airing Sharknado again soon. Yes. Yeah. That's why I wanted you to upload Sharknado, the oh. painting lesson. I see. I will be... To Facebook so everyone can enjoy Sharknado on Facebook. Well, we'll actually do that. Oh, I. <laughs> All right, I'm going to load a little more black up here. And this is another kind of one of these airfoil sort of little uh, tail things that we've got going, but even more so than its friend. So we'll just put that out there, see how that goes. Mm. If I need to dip in the water. My water is a little bit shallow. So I have to dip in. Dip in. There we go. Airfoil. I'm going to get my white just so I can see my little fin, which is more back here. And then there is another little fin that we can see that is right about here. Like that. And I think I got to paint a fin on him. And one slightly hidden fin. Let's go get fin. Hidden fins are a problem. Uh oh. What? I got them a little close together, so now my, this fin is going to have to be 
a little bit tucked behind his friend. <laughs> that happens. Right. Yeah. I don't feel like moving a whole dolphin up, so. We'll just have to show those two fins is slightly hidden. Slightly hidden. That's what you do when you've got fin problems like this. <laughs> so now that I'm all good, I'm going to take my uh, black and my white, because that's going to make it much easier for me. And I'm going to make a very, I'm going to, I like to get the, the turquoise in there, but we're going to put a smidge of black. So it's gray with weird little blue cast to it. And up on the top here, I'm going to paint that lighter color. And I'm going to put on my vision enhancers so that I can see what I'm doing. So you can? The top of the dolphin. is going to be mostly this darker gray color. I mean, lighter gray color. What am I saying, John? I don't know. I don't either. <laughs> and let's give like his little nose right here a little bit at the top of like a little bit. We'll come fix that in a second. Pull that back a little bit there. And on Dan. And Dan. All right, that's pretty good. A little bit of our black and our blue together. So we're just going to paint this back. Quite lovely. Coming here with just the black, just making sure it's just nice. You can put the shadow of the fin right there. And then you can get your very light gray. So right here. Like a little top of the fin. See how we're doing? Is that does it? Do we see both fins? I think so. See, you look Heck. here. Look, you see the close up, and you can say that. I think so. So we're just at first getting like the major value changes across our dolphin and then we'll come back with our little highlight. So loading up with my turquoise again, getting my black in there, get a bunch of our white so we can do the top of the dolphin. Just get the top of that dolphin and his reflection. We come back with a detail brush and create all the next little values. We're going to give them all those little subtle shapes that they have. And now we're just getting him in. I'm going to take just a little bit of this light color, just a smidge, go above the tail. Now we're going to come back here where we feel like we might have a little fin. Go a little bit of a fin. Which 
getting there. A little more of my light color. And I'm going to come right here and do a similar deal. Just lightening up the top of the dolphin. You know, and I'm going to go ahead and add a highlight on the top of the fin. I come right here and just make sure that my four shortened fin at least shows up. <laughs> where I've hidden him. I've really him behind his little friend here. So hopefully we can kind of tell it's a fin. Enjoying that space. Are they starting to take shape? Let's back up. Oh, look at them jumping out of the water, having shape and stuff. Yeah. Getting all three dimensional, these little fellows, right? So we'll add that highlight here. Now, his head is actually a lot in shadow, so most of him is quite light and not so much his head. And on that is a little bit light. That's all we've got to do on this guy. Real loosely brushed. Now I'm going to get my detail. This is my filbert. I'm going to go ahead and load up my filbert with a little quick black. I'm going to come under here. I'm going to put in a little dolphin eye. As you do, which is a little rounding area. Bring this little shadow underneath him. You might come and uh, go ahead and add a little bit of a highlight there. A little bit there. And you can even come a little bit back here. Shadow under the nose. The highlight. I'm coming on the forward of the fin. My friend. A little bit darker right back there, and you can brush this back up. You see, we're just creating these extreme. Contrast values. You guys seeing them on your own painting? Yeah. Okay. This is real. I like how you make them a little smiley. I have a thing. Of a thing. And then, of course, on the foil, we definitely, definitely want to show the, that the foil is a foot. And even though, you know, his little nose is more like this, we're going to come right here and make sure that we see him. And we're going to shadow the front of that fin and come underneath and show that foil. Now I'm going to get a little bit of my aqua onto my brush and quite a lot of my white. Get this the smidgy smidgest of that gray so it's not completely white over the top of this. And up over the eye. Up the back of the fin. On the back of him. A little bit. See that? All 
front of this. I might add a little of this highlight to the back here. Right here above the eye. Front of the fin. Top of the back. Front of this fin. Front of the nose. Above the eye. Little reflection on the top of the fin. Take that nice back. Are they popping out all of a sudden? I think so. Now, his little reflection on his little face, I'm going to do less. Right at the front of the fin there. I think I'm with everybody else. I, I'm worried you're almost done. I am. I am almost done. We're all almost done. I don't know why that would be a worry. Because this is so much fun. <laughs> All right. When we have that, we now have, let's back up, our lovely dolphin. But are we done with our lovely dolphins? No. We are not done with our lovely dolphins. We're going to put out our just white paint. We're going to really rinse whatever our detail brush is. Really, really, really. Right here, I'm going to add a top out a little bit of a very high reflection. Right here. A little bit on the fin. And just a smidge above this eye. Oh. Right there at the back. A little at the nose. Because we're trying to show that they're wet, right? Tapping, nose, there we go, right here at the crease, above the eye. Up the fin. Just happy little dolphin swimming in the sea. Happy little dolphin. Those are really glossy. They are. Dolphins should be glossy. All right. Now, take a look at our little pod. This is pretty fantastic, Cinnamon. I have to say, this you is. Like it? I no, I really like the little pod of purposes. Aren't they just happy? They're very happy. They're very happy. They're having a good day. They're good day fish. And you're gonna sign that, right? I'm going to sign this with my white because I'm going to put it into the foam. And then. And I'm going to tell everybody to be good to yourself. Oh, I, I brought, I brought a picture for him to show. Oh, you do? I, brought, I, I got the picture for you for show Sharky Night. Oh, for Sharky Night. So you can show them. See, oh, it's so small. Let me it's do so this. Small. Go. Shh. There's Sharky Night for There's you. There's Sharky Night. 
So when does Shore Sharky night? Because you never know when the sharks are coming. All oh, these are pain. We all got there. ones for kids. There's one. There's I a shark. <laughs> That's Sharknado. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's little sharks. <laughs> for Sharknado. It's my best hair read. Is it? Yeah. Well, I thought that was fun. It but is safe to go back in the water. There's a little tornado. It's safe to paint the water. It's safe to love the water. It's safe to put dolphins in the water. It's safe to just be in your life. Be good to yourself. Cut yourself a break. Forgive yourself for something today you've been carrying. Put a burden down. It probably isn't serving. Be good to each other. Remember other people. They have hard times too. So if you can forgive just one person this week for something, just let it go. And I want to see you, beautiful beings, at an easel really, really soon, okay? All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.